in general, we have at least a good 20 years for retirement because the minimum retirement age is 62 years old and the average life expectancy in Singapore is 82 years old. However, most people put off retirement planning until it's too late because they're paying for a new house, buying a new car, or saving for their children's education, etc, etc. That being said, the good news is that you can actually plan for all that and still have a comfortable retirement. In this video, we want to show you how that can be done in a step-by-step -step manner. So let's dive right in. Or let's talk about why you should start planning for retirement early. Right? Because it boils down to two words, compound interest. The longer you give your money time to grow, the more you will have in the long run to lead a comfortable retirement or even retire early, F-I-R-E, right? So this graph below will show you the exact importance of compounding, assuming the same annual returns for all three people. So you can see that while Susan only invests 50K for 10 years, right, from 25 to 35, and Bill invests 150K for 30 years, right, from 35 to 65, Susan still ends up with 60,000 more than Bill at age 65. This is simply because Susan started planning for retirement 10 years earlier and let compounding do its magic. On top of that, if you look at Chris, right, Chris continued to invest 5,000 for 40 years and he will end up with $1.1 million, far surpassing what Susan and Bill can get. Right. So in a nutshell, planning for retirement earlier gives your money time to work its magic and work harder for you. So if you are in your 20s and already started to plan for retirement, you definitely got a good head start. But what if you are a little late into the game? Fret not, okay, we can still get a good start by implementing the right retirement planning strategies covered in the next few sections. Before we dive into the retirement methods, let's talk about the thing close to many people's hearts in Singapore, CPF. Right? This is particularly important for Singaporeans given how much we contribute to CPF throughout our lifetime. Right? So on your 25th birthday, a retirement account will be created by CPF. Savings from your OA, Ordinary Account and SA, Special Account, will be transferred to RA, Retirement Account, which will provide you with a lifetime monthly payout when you reach the official retirement age. Currently, it's 63, but maybe it will slowly increase to 65 and beyond, right? Um, there are two key factors which will affect the amount of monthly payout that you receive. First of all, is the retirement sum that's being set aside at age 55, okay? how much you have at age 55. The second factor is the type of CPF uh, life plan, right? The lifetime monthly payout amount ranges from 700 to 2000 plus, And this monthly payout should be taken into consideration when you plan for your retirement. To find out how much you can receive from CPF life, you can actually refer to the CPF website for more updated resources. You can also learn how to invest your ISRS using the CPF guide I've listed down below. If there's one thing that many uncles and aunties talk about in the Kopitiam, and that is money no enough, how to retire, jialat lo. Okay, so hence, one of the most important financial planning decisions you ever need to make is to decide how much you have to retire. Okay, after all, it can be hard to decide when you can make that crossover from working hard in your whole lifetime to like deep accumulating your assets to pay for your money expenses throughout retirement. As you enter the de-accumulation phase or retirement phase, some of the biggest questions a lot of people have are, have I built up enough funds to retire? What should I do when I retire? Do I need to leave anything to my family in future or assist them in any way? Like for example, their house is becoming more and more expensive. 
you need to help them pay the down payment or pay for their wedding you know all the banquets are so expensive nowadays and how should i spend my retirement funds what should i do so that i can have enough for the rest of my life okay so these are a lot of questions in everyone's mind but okay instead of leaving retirement drawdown to chance and risk outliving your assets due to the lack of planning having a proper retirement plan can help to guide your spending during this phase the benefits of having such an exercise are very powerful you know with better clarity how much you intend to spend every month you start to have a better peace of mind instead of wondering whether your assets are truly enough while your funds are while your funds required will vary widely for different folks the strategies are a set of processes that anyone can utilize so now it's time to dive into the four common strategies that are well researched and commonly advocated by financial planning professionals if you want to be notified of more such investing videos do remember to smash the like button and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Don't forget to turn on the notifications bell as well. So with that, here's a financial meme for you. Okay, our first retirement drawdown strategy is the 4% strategy. So what is this 4%? All right. So at the core, it is about determining a percentage to withdraw from your retirement account from a yearly basis all right so four percent has been the typical rate endorsed by a lot of research back studies numerous modeling and all that so their results show that this is like a fail safe withdrawal rate right to have your money last for at least 30 years okay so the actual implementation can come with variations so one of it is like maybe you go for a fixed rate 4% every year or you can go for inflation adjusted one like assuming you have a retirement savings of 750,000 okay you withdraw 4% and you assume an inflation of 2% that means for the first year you will withdraw 30,000 and subsequently year 2 you will withdraw 30,600 and year 3 is 31,200 all right so the strength, what is the pros of this uh, strategy? It is easy to understand and easy to implement. Okay, just withdraw 4%, very easy, right? However, there's also the downside, all right? So a lot of people may think, oh, is 4% fail safe? Is it, uh, you know, too high or too low? If you get, uh, if you withdraw at a higher rate, Okay, you may not have enough to live on later on if you withdraw at a lower rate you may be not living to the fullest for your retirement okay so this is the first retirement strategy let's move on to the next one which is the bucket strategy okay so this strategy itself is uh, more like a time segmentation Okay, whereby you divide your retirement savings into three buckets based on how or based on when you want to spend them okay so first of all is bucket number one which is like the savings with the lowest risk instruments for your near-term expenses the bucket number two is somewhat higher return investments for the middle term okay so it will be of a slightly higher volatility bucket number three is the biggest so-called the biggest one whereas you park it to the highest growth asset allocation so this will be more of the risky kind but that one is for the longer term your monthly income will be drawn from bucket number one so the near-term expenses bucket number two will replenish bucket one and bucket three the biggest one will replenish bucket two Okay, for the nuances of the actual implementation is that uh, bucket one may maybe it will last you for five years of retirement. Okay, bucket two maybe for the last uh, for the next ten years. Okay, and bucket three 
will be beyond the first 15 years so bucket one and two is total up is 15 years so bucket three is to last beyond the 15 years okay um there's also about the method of when you plan to empty the bucket so some plan to empty bucket one first then two then three or you may want not want to empty one bucket before you move on to the next one so this uh implementation flow will depend on each individual okay and uh, when you talk about the pros of this concept is that many people find it intuitive all right uh it's also likely to maybe you give more confidence to people to deal better with uh, better like the double whammy of inflation right now uh, high inflation and people are living longer so this will somewhat give you more control maybe the bucket number one you may want to uh, slowly spend it you put more to bucket three and things like that the downside will be you need more oversight you need to look at uh, how you want to manage this kind of uh, different buckets how you want to make it flow downwards and also the lifestyle will depend heavily on the investment returns of maybe the third bucket so that you can flow to the second bucket then to the first bucket all right so this is the retirement strategy number two now let's move on to the third strategy the flooring strategy okay so like the name suggests it involves setting a floor for your retirement expenses this is also called a essential versus discretionary approach all right because you will classify your retirement expenses as essential or discretionary essential expenses involve things like food housing utilities and monthly bills and all that discretionary expenses are things like travel around the world uh, additional hobbies like gardening uh, buying antiques or other unexpected ex uh, expenses that may occur as and when right so the low risk um, investments okay or those that you want guaranteed income is usually put inside an annuity such as cpf life or retirement plans and used to fund the essential expenses then a mix of medium to high risk investments will be um the, the funds will be parked there all right to fund the discretionary as this uh, discretionary things like uh, traveling uh, hobbies expensive hobbies and things like that okay um this strategy okay is involve a high level of customization because it is expense driven and determined by the retirement lifestyle so this will differ widely based on each individual all right so different folks have different strokes right so you may want to have a lavish lifestyle you want to spend 10k a month you will need more uh, you want, you may need to park more to the kind of a uh, high risk uh, you know high risk investments compared to someone i just need to spend thousand to two thousand on basic necessities uh, then maybe cpf life is already enough okay so the upside the benefit of this strategy is that it's intuitive okay you can choose to live within your means so this strategy will be quite easy to implement for a lot of people so let's say uh, i just want to eat bread and instant meal for every meal it's confirmed very easy right okay or uh, on uh, on top of that okay you can also visualize how cpf life can play a part in helping you to retire comfortably the weakness of this strategy is that you do re run the risk of underspending and living at a reduced lifestyle for example if you have uh, a few million park aside and you still scream and save on a daily basis that's not really the purpose of you know living for retirement right you want to live happy uh, at your golden age right and also the 
other downside is that how do you handle inflation okay effectively in your flooring because right now you are just catering for essential expenses and discretionary expenses how do you handle high inflation in these two types of expenses now let's move on to the strategy number four dividends only strategy okay some people set up to pursue the straightforward strategy which is what we call you leave your retirement assets untouched you keep that uh, untouched and you only use the dividends or retire uh, the interest to provide the passive income to uh, you know uh, spend on your expenses so a derivation of this strategy will be to buy a rental property and live on the rental income or you can own a dividend portfolio that churns out sustainable passive income and then you just spend based on this passive income okay the strengths of this strategy is quite a lot right so you don't need to worry uh, you can sleep uh, soundly every night you don't need to worry whether you will outlive your retirement funds or not because you are just uh, you know surviving based on the passive income and more importantly right it allows you to leave a legacy you can give an inheritance to your kids to your family in future let's say you know like the older generation they always say wow after i pass on i want to leave this hdb to my offspring uh, so right now they can do it because what you have been doing is you just survive on the dividend uh, monthly income and then at the end of the day the house is fully paid off and you can uh, you know give it to your son your daughter and all that okay the weakness of this strategy of course very obvious is that you need a massive amount of retirement assets to be accumulated in fact um, if you look at the bigger picture right only a small percentage of people can afford to use this strategy okay so you must grow your capital to a substantial sizable amount other than that okay you can expect that your monthly income will be fluctuating also because the dividend income or recurring income is dependent on the interest rates the rental rate the dividends you and more so this wraps up okay the four retirement strategies that you can implement for your retirement Next up, there are a few retirement planning tools and workshops you can tap on to make it easier for your financial planning. All right. So first of all is a CPF retirement calculator. So one of the most detailed and comprehensive retirement calculators is the CPF one. All right. You can just find it uh, Google and then you can factor in all your key data points like your expenses, housing loan, anticipated pay increment cpf investments and all that to determine your nest egg so this calculator also requires the largest amount of input lah, okay but it provides the best estimates for your retirement planning because they already take into account all the assets and liabilities into one single place the second one is a ntuc income retirement calculator so this is uh, slightly more complex because it allows you to control the finer details like the inflation rate or investment returns of your assets and this will require more of uh, analytical thinking and to gauge whether you will be able to achieve that particular rate all right but this granular data right can allow you to get a better estimate as well lah. okay so one of the big benefits of this calculator is that it helps you to estimate how much you should save monthly okay to attain your desired retirement lifestyle as for the retirement workshops okay cpf again right so because cpf is a lot focused on retirement so the cpf board do host a range of workshops that educate the public on how to utilize the cpf for retirement and if terms like cpf life retirement sum scheme made issue life sound very foreign to you you will definitely benefit greatly from their uh, either weekend or lunchtime retirement workshops 
the other also government agency right but the other part is uh, money sense it's like a national financial education program in singapore so this program will also enable us to become more self-reliant where they provide a lot of financial guides okay and also regularly conduct workshops and seminars on both retirement as well as the other financial related topics now let's move on to the list of retirement focus blogs and youtube channels so shameless plug here i'm running this youtube channel okay um, this is something that i work on separately okay uh, from small cat asia where i want to focus this youtube videos to be more general kind all right centered around singapore stocks as well as us stocks and also maybe talk about retirement stuff like this one all right uh, so currently there are already many interesting videos like the one uh, seven singapore stocks to celebrate ndp uh, comfort they grow trading at 15 year low and even uh, i also even talk about the best retail rate in singapore and all that so this uh, invest kaki's mission all right is to help you invest for the better better wealth better life okay so if you are still not a subscriber please subscribe to our youtube channel here so that you can be notified of all these videos all right and the next uh, youtube channel that i want to share with you is from josh tan all right um he's the astute parent with a subscriber base of more than 40k okay another youtuber that i personally admire due to his solid understanding and competence on wealth matters despite coming from a financial advisory background all right he's very candid about sharing the best practices for common folks like us okay to build wealth and as a registered okay a chfc charter holder he's also able to provide detailed um you know retirement plan analysis and financial planning tips to help you kickstart your journey towards financial freedom so now let's talk about the blogs okay uh, another friend of mine okay uh, keith he runs this one of the oldest financial blogs in the list okay investment modes he has a lot of knowledge all right uh, regarding investing or retirement planning so in fact all right, he has this thing called dynamic retirement withdrawal method so if you're interested you can actually check it out okay um it will definitely help you to plan better for your future okay uh the other one that i want to share is fifth person okay so fifth person uh, aims to help us you know uh, equip better with uh, the right investment knowledge but although they are more well known for the investment advice the website itself has a significant amount of articles on retirement planning dividend stocks uh, the methods concepts and more okay so um maybe just one more blog that i want to share is sg money matters he's also another financial advisor with more than 10 years of experience uh, so you can be assured of his wealth of knowledge so he talked a, a lot of uh, instruments like uh, how to use REITs to generate retirement income to talk about um, sis he cover a lot of retirement planning concepts as well so he will open your mind to more unconventional ways of retirement planning okay so all the information above can be quite a lot to take in especially if you're doing research on retirement for the first time hence feel free to save this video in your watch list all right and you can revisit anytime at the same time let me conceptualize this whole retirement planning thing okay so first of all uh, we should always find out what our real retirement objective is whether is it to leave a legacy to your offspring or live life to the fullest or somewhere in between there's no judging here because we all only live once yolo right next find out how much you will need based on the retirement calculator so what is your desired retirement amount next extract the shortfall that means you take your desired uh, retirement total amount minus what you currently have 
So that is the short fall. Okay. And finally, make plans to bridge this shortfall or even exceed this shortfall to enable you to live a meaningful and comfortable retirement that you always wanted. Okay. And personally, okay, I'm uh, gunning for a mix of strategies. Uh, strategy three and four. Three and four. Okay. Number three is the flooring strategy where my CPF life of uh, 2K plus, hopefully 2K plus per month will cover my essential expenses. Whereas strategy four, which is the dividends only strategy, will generate enough dividend income to sustain my desired lifestyle expenses. So around 5,000 per month for me to travel, enjoy life, sit at the beach and drink martini. <laughs> okay. And then at the end of it, I will still be able to leave some assets to my wife or kids or even grandkids in future. And to attain that, right, assuming a 4% dividend yield for my portfolio and that the dividends growth can keep pace with inflation, I will still need to grow my capital until it's $1.5 million, okay? Because that one will give me $60,000 uh, to be based on the 4% dividend yield, okay? For that to happen, I rope in my friend Augustine. So he's a semi-retiree. He already invested in a lot of REITs to retire and uh, get passive income. All right, so I team up with him to come up with a dividend-focused membership in Patreon where we want to walk the talk okay, and see how we can enjoy passive income with lesser volatility and also share our findings with all of you, right? So mingle with like-minded income investors like you. So if you want, you can join us in this new Patreon membership for $10 per month. So inside, you will get a 200k dividend growth model portfolio. Right now, we have five REITs and five dividend growth stocks. And we are slowly adding to 20 positions in total. Okay. And we will also share our best ideas trade alerts and ongoing coverage of all these 20 positions going forward. On top of that, we will give you full access to the premium reports. Uh, things like top 10 stocks for 2023, 7 stocks for rising interest rates, 25 rule breaker stocks and more. Okay, if you are interested, I've left the link in the description below. So you can just click on it to sign up today. With that, if you find this video helpful for you, I would appreciate it if you can help me to tap the like button and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more of such investing videos. Next up, don't forget to check out this video here to know about the seven Singapore stocks I've come up with to celebrate the National Day. And I will see you next time. Thanks for watching and ciao.